I was scrolling through YouTube recently and looking at some art videos. I was checking out what some newer channels were putting out there. There's a whole lot of new art channels popping up. I don't know if you've noticed that. What could that be about? Could it have anything to do with AI and recording yourself, making art being one of the only ways to prove that you actually made something? All right, that's not the point of this video. Just leave that. Anyway, I was watching these and I was just marveling at how much more helpful these channels were than mine. So many channels perfectly content to hand out edicts and clear advice on the rules of art and beauty and process and the definitive way to make a good picture. Here's what makes a good line. Here's what makes good shapes. Here's what makes for good color. I found myself asking, how are they not getting bogged down in philosophical minutia like I am? If this isn't your first video on this channel, you know my videos here on YouTube are on the other side of things. I'm more interested in soothing the mind, more interested in exploring the weirder, more personal questions that arise on the art journey. I focus on that for a few reasons. One, it's more interesting to me than the technical side, at this point in my life, at least. That wasn't always the case. Two, I think it's more rarely discussed in the public art circles, so I consider it an especially valuable thing to throw out into the discourse. And three, and this is the kicker, I find discussing art with anything like an air of certainty to be totally crazy. In the words of Voltaire, doubt is not a pleasant condition, but certainty is an absurd one. Now, you might think that's odd considering I make art courses and I've taught art at an art college, but you see, my skepticism isn't really about art. It's about everything. Why are we here? Why is there something rather than nothing? Who are you? Who am I? Is there an I? What is the ground floor of reality? What is the nature of our simultaneity with it? Does truth exist? Does anything happen, strictly speaking? How is it that I shall die without knowing where I have been? I wonder if the suggestion box will be filled with invitations to join a religion after that little discursion. In light of all this uncertainty, it should be obvious that an emergent phenomenon like the creation of art is about as contingent as a thing can get, about as constructed and illusory as possible. It's just a mysterious and wonderful little bubble of foam floating at the top of a fathomless sea of mystery. I feel compelled to remember this and honor this for more of the time than I would forget it or ignore it. That's my preference. It's also amazing to me how certain and brusque we can be with what is surely just our art. I mean, our human art. I sometimes sit and wonder about all the art forms that might be. Ours is so narrow because it must be art to us. So its form is mediated necessarily by our physiology, our evolutionary brute facts, our minds that we don't understand. Paintings are paintings to us. They look right to us because of the kinds of colors and values our eyes see, because of the scale at which we're used to seeing the world, because of the built-up cultural familiarity with pictures we have that has millennia of momentum behind it. A bird might look at our paintings and, if it could have these kinds of thoughts, think them very nonsensical because we didn't organize the way the UV light reflects off of the different pigments nicely. A whole realm of design choices, invisible to us, unregarded by us, forms of art ignored. Wondering about what art might be to a dog or bird might be a little too fanciful for people, I suppose. We're slow to ascribe any kind of depth to the thinking of animals, Fuck, most people won't even allow that they do indeed think. For the record, I think they do. We tend to fluff thinking up into something bigger than it is. We want to say thinking is linguistic strings of internal monologue, and we ignore intuitive thinking, 
the kind that does most of the work but isn't promoted to conscious attention very often. It's probably easier to think about the possible arts of intelligent aliens. That at least avoids the politics of granting our dogs complexity. Imagine these aliens being besold or what have you, as deep and as wise as us, or deeper. They could come from any kind of place with a very different biological background. They could have completely different kinds of senses based on the environmental milieu they developed in. Even if you wanted to keep it as boring as possible and insist these aliens could only have the same senses as us, they might have a different primary sense for their sensorium. Like dogs. It's all about smell for dogs. Everything else is kind of meh, not as exciting, not as detailed, not as trustworthy. My dog won't even look at massive changes in her visual environment. I walked outside with my dog a couple weeks ago, and there was a massive work ladder going from our landing to the roof of our building. This is a relatively large object, unexpected, and it was directly in our path to exit our building. And she didn't even glance at it. Instead, she went right for the tiny, dry pea stain near the front gate. I just read an article about a study from Cornell showing that the parts of a dog's brain that process smells and visuals are robustly connected, a connection not reliably observed in any other species, apparently. What could that mean? Can dogs see smells? Maybe it's not literally seen, but maybe the dog has a sort of sense of the shape of a smell, the color of it, our dog's synesthetes. Can you imagine such a thing? Imagine smelling something, and right there, built into the sense, is some other spectral understanding of where this shape of smell starts and ends. What would art look like for an intelligent creature, an intelligent alien that is more like a dog? that could sense things like that. We know smells can be pleasant or unpleasant, but could the shape of a smell be beautiful? What can be objective about art if there's possible constructions like that out there? If we added one little thing to our physiology, to what we're capable of, art would transform utterly. All the rules would change. It's the same if we took something away. That we have an example of. Art looks different and should be made differently for the colorblind. Video games and phone UIs are finally catching on to that and making accessibility options for the colorblind. Art is also made differently by the colorblind. I always found it a little strange that my friends who are colorblind artists feel they must make the concession of adjusting their paintings so they look right to non-colorblind people, usually by asking a non-colorblind person to look at it and guide them in adjusting it. Design decisions made within an unseen realm, choices about things one will never personally experience. Isn't that fascinating? It'd be like me asking a bird to help me with the arrangement of the UV spectra in my painting. In this sense, all of our art is a narrowing, a demarcating of the possibility space. The results and its effects on others are contingent upon physiological and cultural structures of vast size and complexity, over which we had no say and of which we have a dubious grasp. In light of all this, to say there are good shapes and bad shapes is ridiculous. And even though I've been talking in the context of aliens and hyper-intelligent dog beings, I want to make clear, I also think it's ridiculous to say there are good and bad shapes to human beings. I must emphasize that I don't take all of this as mere indulgent philosophical musings. These ideas really matter to me, and I let their implications affect the way I live my life, how I feel day to day, and most relevant here, how I go about my art practice and how I feel about it. Isn't that a novel idea, actually letting the weird things you believe matter in your life? Let them guide you in your life. I find my acceptance of all these uncertainties has a soothing effect in my life and in my practice. 
That's why I'm making this video. It's not an angsty vent about the fearfulness of uncertainty and groundlessness. It's a celebration of uncertainty. It makes some of the artistic suffering that's on offer in this world impossible. It's like the last 15% of possible artistic misery cannot be experienced when deeply connecting with the truth of uncertainty because there is no rational structure in which to experience it. That's beautiful. That's very helpful indeed. Thanks, groundless nature of the non-understandable universe. Naturally, I might be accused of then believing this because it benefits me. True enough, true enough, could be, but this is art. This isn't politics or science or medicine where the stakes are high. If I'm wrong about this, I haven't hurt anyone. And all I've done is deluded myself into feeling calmer and more joyful. As far as choices and viewpoints go, that's pretty safe. The best part of all this unknowing is how utterly free it makes you. It's a shame how many artists toil under the illusion that they are constrained. Some have invested every single thought about art they've ever had into ways to constrain themselves. And it's possible they've gone decades without ever taking a moment to recognize, much less act on, their own total and ultimate freedom. What a shame. The arts that might have been indeed. Far be it from me to disrupt the normal course of action in your life, but for what it's worth, I think you should meditate on the groundless and contingent nature of art and see if you can't find a little bit of respite and relaxation there. There's only so much you can worry about what your work means about you when you remember that you is a very slippery idea indeed, and that your work is only perceivable by the particular limited meat sensors of the human apparatus. God, don't you feel calm just hearing it? You know, there's often a hypocritical tension in these kinds of videos between me telling you to trust no one's answers while implying that I'm totally right about all of this. I've thought of no way to avoid that tension that doesn't include closing down my YouTube channel, so you'll have to allow me some hypocrisy or else we wouldn't get to have these little chats, and I do love our little chats. But as always, only take what serves you from this. If you're not in a place in your life to think of these ideas without feeling a vast dread, just dump them. In art, the useful ideas are the ones that keep you drawing and the bad ones are the ones that keep you from drawing. Hmm. Okay, I think that's all I have for now. Thank you for listening, and thank you for drawing today.